Buongiorno, my soccer universe. Yes, I'm using a little bit too many foreign languages as of late. But yeah, welcome to the Serie A review uh, of the first weekend back. And what a week weekend this was. Headline number one. Slatan is the hero again, but so is Ronaldo. And uh, an unlikely hero with Henrik Mkhitaryan. Uh, also headlining the three winners of the match day in Milan, Juve and Roma. I think those three teams definitely boosted their chances uh, going forward uh, this season. We also had uh, another great Inter comeback, but they keep finding themselves down, but this time at least they found a win again. So Inter has a completely lost, uh, forgotten how to win. So that's also another headline that I have to put in there. And the last one is we had, uh, yeah, the debut of Prandelli at Fiorentina did not work out at all. Okay, I'm wearing probably the favorite jer jer jersey I got this year. It's not a long sleeve, I'm wearing just a black long sleeve jersey uh, below this. The Milan 3rd, 98, 99, just a wonderful jersey. And since Milan was playing away from home with black pants, I said, yeah, let's go all black for this one. And yeah, let's get started. Um, will I? Before we uh, go deeper, I saw two games fully. This was the Inter Torino game, it was Napoli Milan. Um, I saw some highlights and a, a little bit bits and pieces of other uh, games like Spezia, Atalanta. I saw the last few minutes a little bit, a little last few minutes of Fiorentina Benevento. Um, they showed highlights of Juve Cagliari in the halftime of both games that I was watching. So I have a good feeling. And then I watched also the highlights of Roma and Sassolo to kind of round it all out and be uh, well informed for this video. I uh, didn't see anything of Lazio's win at Crotone other than that I see now Immobile scored another goal so he's back in peace business and I don't know where the whole investigation for now went with Lazio and you know all the fake COVID or uh, uh, weird COVID tests. Let's, no not fake, weird COVID testing. I have not heard anything about it but uh, we shall see. I know that the um, uh, Juve Napoli verdict has been confirmed but yeah Immobile scored another one and then Correa in the 58th give them a 2-0 uh, win and Crotone having a really tough schedule to start with. I mean they played basically almost all the top teams at home so far so uh, no wonder that they already very far down the table. Spezia uh, rather surprisingly hangs on to a nil-nil draw against Atalanta. Atalanta really not looking right at this point. Uh, it is not this free-flowing, free-attacking form, but you know, it's very, very, very often that um, Atalanta get going later in the season. It might well be it was a little bit too much, uh, you know, with Champions League and so on. Um, and COVID cases, I think there's too much happening. Yes, Atalanta had a goal disallowed for offside. Uh, but, you know, I saw the, some uh, attacks, but it was not very Atalanta-like. And so Spezia gets a vital point for them uh, that they probably didn't, um, were looking for ahead of the um season ahead of the game. Uh, Juventus probably had one of their better uh, performances of the season, um, only winning 2-0 against Cagliari, but actually looking the part and having Ronaldo in the squad clearly helps Juventus. He scores two goals, uh, one assist by Morata, and I think that partnership also works well. I think Morata really works well at Juventus because they they don't use him as the main target man. They use him as kind of a supplemental striker, which is a role that suits him much better than if he's the main focus of um, the team. Here the main focus is, of course, Ronaldo, who sits, as I said, for the first one and the second one. That was great taking. I mean, I had to watch the replay two or three times because it looked so weird how he com uh, how did he convert that uh, that one uh, crossing from Demiral and get 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 gets it in. Juve should have added more, but Kali also had a goal disallowed for offside. But uh, Juve actually looking strong, and maybe this will strike a little bit fear into the opponents because uh, so far Juve has been so and so, and now maybe they look better. And if Juve clicks. I think we cannot look past Juve if we um, look for uh, favorites for the upcoming season. Then I did not see much, but Benevento wins at Fiorentina. And you know, they uh, fired the coach Iacchini, they got Prandelli, who had a great first in with uh, Fiorentina. 
very often coaches coming back doesn't work out and I'm afraid this is working here. Fiorentina is a squad that has been, since I'm watching, especially two seasons ago, I always thought that Fiorentina is a really entertaining side to watch. And then suddenly they find themselves uh, towards the bottom end of, of, of the table. There's something not right within this dressing room, within these players, because Fiorentina, by the pure talent that they have on the team, should be at least challenging for Europa League spots. Uh, and with some run, they could do more. But, you know, you have Ribery, who shows flashes of brilliance. And then a few months, then immediately he's injured and out again and doesn't really work uh, as well. So, yeah. Benevento gets a win in Florence uh, through Improta. Uh, also, really three important points for, uh, for them because Benevento is definitely looking to stay up in the league. Then we already had Roma against Parma. Parma is a team, you know I have sympathies for Parma, but Parma is a team that I'm looking at. And yes, I also like Fabio Liverani. Uh, I actually liked what he did at Lecce. Lecce should not have been relegated last season. But Parma is a team where I'm looking, they're in a whole lot of heap of trouble. Uh, they are very similar to Köln in uh, Germany, where uh, you just feel this team is not good enough at the moment. And Roma was sparing them, it was only 3-0. Uh, it was 3-0 they have with all the goals scored more or less in the last 15 minutes. Um, I flipped over from Inter to Torino and wants to see how Roma is doing against Parma because I was going uh, back and forth. Shall I watch the one or the other? I actually was happy that I stayed with Inter Torino. But I flipped, flipped over and saw the, uh, the 2 nil by Mkhitaryan. Uh, <laughs> great shot. I mean, you thought, thought, thought everything was clear and he just slammed it under the bar. Majoral scored the first one, then Mkhitaryan heads in the third one as well. It should have been more. Parma was non-existent. I think they got one shot on goal finally again, but I'm I'm worried about Parma. Let's put it that way. Roma, though, I think they can make a good challenge for Champions League spots. I think they have a good enough squad, and if they can stay somewhat fit, because that's the one thing that held Roma all this back is too many injuries. I have the feeling. And then we're at into Torino. Uh, that was a game. I think the first 50 minutes, I definitely would have said that Torino was the more active team. They got a big blow that Belotti was out injured uh, in the warm-up already. And then later on, even uh, Verdi had to come, come off with a muscle in injury. And this now is the time, I think, we will see. And we saw it all in other games too. There will be a lot of muscle injuries coming now. And... Uh, depending on who will be hit, you need to really carefully look at which players are you using. I think that with if Zaza was not was a little bit more concentrated, he could have had a goal much, much earlier than the one that he just got, that he got just before the halftime whistle. Um, with a wonderful assist by Mete, uh, who just back heels it into his path and he has to make it, but he had a few uh, situations before where I think uh, if there is a proper striker there or a more reliable player um, it will already be one or two uh, two nil at the half for Torino for sure um, and it was Inter seemed anemic especially in the defense I I was yes on front uh, if Lukaku is always the beaten for Inter to focus on, but I have to I have to say the rest of the team, especially in the, uh, on the back, it really looked uh, bad, really not good. And then they um, <laughs> thought they had a free free kick at a promising position, and suddenly the re referee uh, walks towards VAR and it's a penalty, clear penalty. I have I have to say, but it, it took a while, and Ansaldi makes it two in the sixty second minute. I'm thinking. Whoa, Conte is in trouble. However, Inter responded, and the next 10 minutes they had a flurry where Sanchez, after Lukaku uh, assisted, gets the uh, one, the one, one, two, just two minutes later, 64th, and then Lukaku assisted by Sam Sanchez, the, the 67th, makes it 2 2, and it could have been immediately there 3 2. Inter really turned, turning on, and um, Torino feeling the pressure. And I don't know where. I thought, I think they thought we have this game, game in the bag, we can play this home nicely. And Inter suddenly really got uh, their pride was hurt and we need to move forward. Um, 
they didn't get a penalty, which, yeah, it was, was he offside or not? Um, because there's, uh, who was it? I think it was uh, uh, Hakimi, who was lying offside. The ball comes to the Torino defender, who then takes the ball, that doesn't deflect, but tries to control it. And then in when he wants to kick it away, he uh, hits Hakimi. It's a penalty, but it was one of those really, really fine lines. Um, and so, yeah, it's a penalty, Lukaku 3-3-2, three, three, and then he assists Martinez to make it 4-2. Uh, just when uh, Torino tried to maybe get a desperate e equalizer, but I think for Inter this was a big win because Torino is a trap game. I think Torino, again, they're losing, but Torino doesn't look bad. Uh, they're not like Parma. They need to uh, maybe play some... Um, teams that are more uh, mid-table and, and, and so I think Torino is a team that can be dangerous to anyone. Uh, they have been just really, really unlucky so far. Um, lucky is also what I was described as all about uh, before that um, Bologna wins 2-1 at Sampdoria. I did not see anything of that one. Uh, Verona hit the woodwork four times in that game. Twice in the first half. Uh, completely um, dominating Sassuolo, Sass Sass who with the first shot by Boga take the lead. And then uh, the second goal, make it 2-0 through Berardi himself in the 76, and I think it's done. But there I have two, twice, they hit the post more. Verona probably should have deserved a point out of that one. Udine, um, but at that point, then Sassuolo takes actually a lead in the table. Uh, so putting Milan under, under pressure to such a degree that if Milan only would have played a draw, they would have said uh, Sassuolo would have taken the top spot. Wouldn't it be Genoa and then it's Napoli Milan. And what can I say about that one? <laughs> uh, it started out rather slow. Uh, and the game needed a spark and it was both in the first and the second half. And the spark came from Slatan both times. The first one, I think Milan had a little bit more control, always in the beginning stages of each half, where they were active, they were pressing na na Napoli, they were causing all kinds of problems up front. Uh, but um, and having also the better chances, although uh, I think Milan always had trouble with uh, with getting Politano under control. But the cross from Hernandez into the box when Slatan heads it in to, to make it 1-0 was A, a beautiful goal, and B, um, set up a short period of Milan do do dominance. It was followed then by a huge dominance by Na Na Napoli, who after the first corner kick had, I think, three uh, chances to convert one, where it hit the, po uh, the crossbar from very close range. Uh, so yeah, it was <clears throat> kind of a weird, it was a weird game. And I, I, I really, going forward, Na Napoli is extremely, extremely dangerous. Um, it is more on the backside that they have problem. But yeah, Milan with a uh, little, little bit of luck, but also uh, skillfully kind of managed the game. Probably could have made it even two, two, two before, before, before the half, but I think the 1-0 was uh, probably a fair reflection. Se second half, I also started similarly. It was slow, no one really bo bothering, and then uh, Rebic crosses in and Slatter makes it 2-0 in the 54th. And at that moment, I'm thinking, yeah, the game is done. Boy, was I wrong, because immediately Gattuso brings in Zielinski for Lausanne, and that changed the outlook of the game. And uh, Mertens gets very qu too fast for my li li like, and that reminds me, reminded me of the first game I want to see of, say, of the 18-19 season, uh, where Milan had a 2 nil lead and then lost 3-2, and I was afraid that some, some, something like, like that is coming now soon. Two minutes later, Bakayoko is sent off with a yellow-red. Uh, yes, the second yellow is okay. The first one, I would say, yeah. Uh, yes, he steps on Hernandez, but on the other side, um, he plays the ball first. So we have we have to see uh, how that will work. Then they, he also brings on Petania for uh, Politano, which at one point I was happy that uh, Politano was always uh, dangerous, is off, but Petania was kind of similar to Lu Lukaku, so, so something a Milan could really not handle. And then um, he kind of brought the kids, not Castiejo necessarily, but Hauge for Rebic, um, although Hauge, I have to say, played played well. Then uh, Colombo for Ibrahimovic, because Ibrahimovic... Uh, pulled his muscle and I'm afraid he will be out for a little bit longer. And I'm thinking, yeah, um, 
up front we have not much and on the back it also looks a little bit shaky with Kia, Kia also in the first like after five five minutes looked like with a muscle in, in injury but uh, he could play through all the game which I was very happy because we Milan needs his experience uh, on the back but other than that uh, it was Napoli despite 10 men who put Milan under loads of pressure and Milan was very passive not uh, not as active as in the first half and especially uh, also at the beginning of the second half, not disrupting Na Napoli enough. Um, it came late then that they went for it. I mean, Petania missed a big chance to make it 2-2 uh, and then on the count counter again, Benazir uh, with a wonderful pass assist, Hauge in the 9-9 to make it 3-1. He could have pulled it back immediately through 3-2. Uh, there were chances for Milan uh, earlier to kind of uh, convert it. I have to say my man of the match definitely was Frank Kessi, although he then also had a little uh, nausea, uh, which I thought was crazy. Uh, so yeah, uh, could have been a Pyrrhic victory for Milan, especially if Zlatan is out for longer. I'm not worried about Zlatan mi missing for a couple of games because Milan is settled enough. And I have to say Kessi and uh, Benazer in the middle are absolute monsters uh, in midfield. They, they dominate most of the time. And this was also in, interesting seeing them uh, against the Napoli uh, with Bakayoko uh, in there as well, who played for uh, Milan before. But um, also uh, Ruiz, who kind of also ho holds down the center back, back, back there. So this was a really interesting Great game, maybe not the fastest game, but uh, you, you see a lot of skill in there. Milan getting a vital, vital win uh, there because now they keep staying on top. And uh, their chance of winning a championship last time around was 22%. Now we are 31% because we beat a uh, head-to-head opponent. Roma suddenly also moving up. They are now in third place and a 12% chance already winning the championship. They have never been above 2% 2, 2 at the beginning of the season. And Juve, of course, with 90% also still into 23. So those are kind of the teams that really got a boost in this round. And those four, I Sassuolo... I expect them to do well and maybe challenge for the Europa League, but I don't think they will stay in the total top four. But let's see how it will go. I mean, they're still rated slowly, so they're not having ma uh, their, their percentage is not high enough. But I think those four uh, that I just mentioned might well end up being the top four of this season. Napoli uh, with a one, one point disadvantage and also having uh, lost a few one. I, Napoli probably has a talent, a very talented attack, and if they go on around, they they could do it similar for Atalanta. But at the, at this this very moment, I would put my I would put my money. I'm not saying you should bet on Milan, Juve, Inter, Roma. Those are the four that I would see on top, which I think also the big four kind of in Italy at the moment. Towards the bottom, uh, Crotone looks bad, Genoa looks bad, Parma looks bad. Uh, Benevento Spezia, just because they still have a low rating, I kind of although they are a little bit more mid mid table. Fiorentina worryingly so as well. Uh, Torino doesn't have a, is not given much chances here, but I think Torino will get out of the slump and will move up soon. Um, as for the next round, we have a big Sassuolo Inter matchup. Uh, that is one that I'm looking forward to. Atalanta Hellas is also could, could be interesting more than Milan Fior, Fiorentina. Um, you know, I never should, should, should say it because Fior, Fior, Fiorentina in Milan has always caused trouble. But it should be three points. And then, of course, the big clash Napoli Roma. We also have two games on Monday, which I'm not so ha happy about. But, you know, maybe I'll do next week Serie A video. This will be uh, on. Uh, Tuesday, shot on Tuesday. So let's see about that. Anyway, let me know how you think the season is going. We have a really exciting top of the table at the moment. It's really not very clear who is gonna make it out of it and who is gonna, uh, you know, who are to who is gonna be champions. The percentages, uh, percentages I just showed you are from my model. I would not count you out at the moment. Uh, they stay in touch of up there. Um, and have still the best squad uh, if they stay healthy and if Pirlo can get some, some of them I think Juve will be hard and I also think Inter despite all the troubles they are showing Inter 
has a super deep and highly talented squad that those two I think will, will eventually contest for the title. That's what I think and then the rest will go for the Champions League spots. But I'm very happy that Milan had a good start. I think just be up until before the two uh, rounds before Christmas, they actually have a very decent schedule to kind of keep on piling on points. But you know, that's also the danger because that's where Milan sometimes loses, but especially home games uh, against also kind of attacking opponents. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye!